On this episode of Live With A Classic, we'll be checking the sensors and electrical connections on the Bosch Dedectronic Fuel Injection System. Welcome back to Live With A Classic, and today we're having another look at the Bosch Dedectronic Fuel Injection System. Today we're looking at the various sensors and electrical connections in the system, how you check all of them and how you make sure that all the connections are good and all the values are what they're supposed to be. Uh, if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen these videos before, it's a whole video series on the fuel injection system on these early cars. It's called Dedectronic. It's the same on many other cars as well. Uh, I've gone through the whole system as an overview. I've gone through the map sensor, which is the most important part of the system. I call it the heart of the system. And I've gone through how to check your fuel pressure and set the fuel pressure. If you're new to this channel and you're into these sort of things, working on old cars, if you want to maybe get one of these cars, you already have one, you want to try and fix it, I highly recommend that you uh, check out my channel below. You can subscribe and hit that bell notification. And you can also see a lot of our previous videos on these topics. But now back to today's topic. The sensors on these early systems are not as many as in new systems and they're not as precise, but they still need to work correctly. The only tool that you actually need to check them is a simple multimeter to check resistance. I will show you later what the resistance needs to be at certain temperatures. If you have a car that's not like this one, uh, can be a completely different brand, this will still apply how, the way that you check the sensors. Um, but if, it's, like I said, it's a different car, you can check with the, your manufacturer of your car what the values should be, but the way of going through and troubleshooting the system will be the same. So now let's head on over to the engine and I'll show you where the sensors are located, how you test them, what the values should be, and what to do if they're wrong and show you that they're actually not that difficult to replace. They're pretty easy to get a hold of. So uh, that's not a problem at all. I'll also show you some other good locations to check various connections, just to make sure that they're clean and that the signal's coming through as it should. On these early types of injected engines, there's only really two types of sensors. They're both temperature sensors. Both of them are on this bank, the B bank. One is down here. It's the coolant temperature sensor. And one of them is over here. It's the incoming air temperature sensor. Don't confuse the coolant temperature sensor with the gauge in the car. That one is over here on the other side. It looks basically the same, just over there. That's for the gauge in the car. That's also something that's often misunderstood on these cars, that the A bank is what you see on the gauge and the B bank is what the computer sees in order to control richness and fueling. So they're pretty simple to disconnect. You just simply pull on them on these early ones and they come out looking just like that. And the temperature one is pretty much the same. It's just been angled, but it looks the same. If you unplug yours and they look terribly green and corroded, I highly recommend that you clean them out with some contact cleaner, maybe a tiny little file. And if they're really, really bad, then get a new connector here and replace part of the cable. It's really vital to get a good connection here since the ECU only measures resistance that's been sent out by the sensor here. It has no idea what temperature it is over here. It only knows the resistance caused by temperature. So if you have a bad connection here causing the resistance to go up quite a bit, then it doesn't matter if your um, sensor is in good condition or not. If the connection is bad, you're not going to get the correct signal to the ECU. So now I'll show you what you have to do with the multimeter. Set your multimeter to measure kilo ohms and then connect one lead to each end of the sensor and check what you get. I get 2.89 kilo ohms, which is completely within tolerance because at 20 degrees Celsius, it should be about 2.5 and about 10 degrees Celsius, it should be 3.7. These are not exact numbers, but that's basically what it should be plus or minus a few degrees. But at the moment, it is a cold, chilly day. So it is between, I think it's about 17 degrees in here. So that is completely fine. You can use, of course, an infrared thermometer and measure what the exact engine temperature is because maybe your engine runs perfectly fine at idle, 
but once it gets up to temperature, it's running a bit weird. I actually had that issue. Then this sensor was correct when it was cold, but when the engine was up at running temperature, it was not correct. And therefore I changed it out. They're very simple to change out. They just simply screw into here. So you get a long socket on there and you unscrew them. These are not specific to Jaguar at all. They're used on many DJtronic systems. And I believe they're used on almost all of them. So you can get one for a Mercedes or for a Volvo or for almost any other of the cars and they will work just fine. You measure the temperature of the air sensor in a similar way. It's just that the value is different. So at 20 degrees, it should be at about 300 ohms. So let's try that right now. We'll set it just to regular ohms. And there it's 335 ohm, which is also within spec. So now if you tested both of those sensors, you made sure that the cables are nice and clean. You know that at least this part of the system is working fine. And those are really the main sensors. Of course, there's a lot of other places like the map sensor. They have to make sure that that connection is very clean. Make sure that all the earth points are very clean on the car. There's a few underneath. Make sure that all the positive posts over here on both sides, that's the same on right hand and left hand drive cars are very clean. If you're having issues with this one, I showed you the function of it, uh, the throttle position sensor in an earlier video. There's a large connector back here. You need to clean that one out as well. Up here on the radiator support, you have some of the main relays for the cars. Uh, the two on the right are for the ECU and fuel injection system. So clean out all those connectors if you're having maybe issues with your fuel pump not turning on or various other parts of the system not giving the correct voltage. Make sure all those connections are clean. And last but not least, there is a giant big plug at the end of your ECU that comes up from the top. I've showed it in a previous video where I took the ECU apart. Make sure that that connection is very clean and that the mating surface on that ECU is also clean and not corroded. With all those things checked, if you're still having issues, uh, I would say it's wiring because the parts on these cars are very robust um, connection wise. So if you're still having issues, disconnect the main end of the ECU and get the pin out and then check the resistance off the cables. There should be little to absolutely no resistance at all since if there is resistance, you're messing up all the readings going to the ECU. And that's all of it. That's how you go through and check the connections on this fuel injection system. As you can see, there's not that much to check. It's really not that complicated. You can easily do it in an hour and go through and clean the whole system. And that way you know that at least that part of the system won't give you any trouble at all. And that's how you check the various sensors and connections on the car. As you can see, it's not very difficult to do at all. And it's a really good thing to do. Uh, if these connections on your cars are broken, let's say the sensor is fine, but the cable seems a little frayed and the connections are bad, you can still get these connectors. They're standard Bosch items and they were used on many different cars. So there's no problem in getting the connections and shortening the cables or making a new harness for yourself. I don't believe you can get a hold of a whole harness for the car, but you can definitely make one yourself if they're hard and brittle and you know, a loosened connection. So now what's left to do on the D-Dectronic series? I will show you the last part of the series, which is how to tune the car properly. This will also involve setting the ignition timing, which is not part of the um, D-Dectronic system. It's a completely separate system, but I will show that as well. And then I will show you once that is set and we've set the idle speed, which I will include in that video as well. I will also show the one knob on the back of the ECU how to set the richness at idle, or basically the mixture at idle. So that will be in an upcoming video. But until next time, you can actually follow me on Instagram as well. There's a link down below. It's called Living With A Classic. You'll get some extra footage and behind the scenes looks of the cars. And sometimes I post some teasers of future videos as well. Also feel free to comment below or to send an email to livingwithaclassic at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments 
or any ideas for future videos, content that you want to see on this channel. But until next time, I'm Adam, and this was the Lumifa Classic. I'll see you soon.